<laughs> All right, what are we talking about? We are talking about the quarterly challenge. Quarterly challenge is just about to kick off. We mentioned this in the top five whiskey taboos video. It's yes. at the end of that video. We're going to link that right up here. Quarterly challenge. Basically, this is uh, a dry week for all of the magnificent bastards in the whiskey tribe. It is a challenge to make sure that our shared passion is not becoming a bit of a problem. And to make it a little bit easier, we're reviewing things still so you don't lose the videos. It just won't be alcohol. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the quarterly challenge is kicking off March 1st. Mm -hmm. The incentives are, first thing on the website, what do we have? We're gonna have a list that once you have completed this quarter's challenge, you can submit your name in the forum and we will have a featured website listing of everyone who's completed it. Yes, so all the whiskey challengers who successfully got through the week without drinking, your name is gonna go on this list. We're gonna link it at the end of the week. And then we're gonna take that list, honor system, Honor system. Honor system. We're going to take that list and we're going to put your name at the end of a Whiskey Biscuits episode. Yep. And a Whiskey Vault episode. We're going to have, obviously, more quarterly challenges. Once a quarter, it so happens. Once a quarter? Believe it or not. Shocking. Now, at the end of the year. We'll do quarterly challenges three times a year. Everybody that has successfully completed all four rounds of the quarterly challenge, we're going to have, uh, I'm thinking, it's going to be a special something. I'm thinking like, yeah. a, like an exclusive coaster. Or you a know, car, a discount. <laughs> from, from, this is from the, ah! from <laughs> that's gonna need to be edited. He out. does house calls. That's the best part of anything we shot so he far. He does house calls. <laughs> <laughs> they call uh, me the doctor. Okay, so uh, the quarterly challenge is kicking off March first. This is not a mandatory thing, obviously, but we uh, we hope you guys join us and we hope you enjoy the videos that aren't whiskey videos for this week out of the year. I'm still hopped up on caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. Okay, welcome. Uh, we're gonna do uh, something from uh, Zach Smith this is again. A, a jug o it's, whiskey. It's a jug o blended whiskey. <laughs> Zach Smith, you magnificent. <laughs> Now remember we're always saying, you know, we can't always do expensive stuff because what's the guy always saying? Bottom shelf matters. So this is a Duncan Taylor blended scotch in bulk that Zach swears. It's like those old timey moonshine jugs. Yeah, with, with the, the finger, the... just flip it over. Yeah. Uh, Zach swears this is the best budget whiskey on the planet. Now remember, Duncan Taylor in, in, makes one of my other favorite blends, which is Black Bull. Ooh, very sweet, kind yeah. of strawberry. -y. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like a. But like a strawberry, what are those chews used to, uh, fruit roll up, like a strawberry fruit roll up, roll? kind of waxy I don't know strawberry. if I would say if it was that sugary sweet with artificial strawberry. What is that? There's something there. Oh, sponge cake. Sponge like cake. angel food cake. Slightly vanilla -ed. Oh, yeah, 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 on the nose. Yeah, but with strawberries on it, so it's like, it's like a strawberry <laughs> shortcake using yeah. angel food cake. Oh. Only less strawberry and more sponge Good cake. Good on you. I just saw him to this shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, done. I'm going to try it first. And it's sweet. Mm. Start sweet, finish the sweet, but that strawberry, that strawberry, man, that... It's really there. It stays with you. This is friendly. It is. I could see this being one I would always keep. I think Zach's right. This is one you could just keep. Yeah. Have something else. Take this to the table. This could be. You know, this is a decanter of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. If you want something like friendly, <laughs> that you know, if there's people that you have in the house, you mm -hmm. get something in the decanter, and you want something in the decanter that's likely to be acceptable to the most number of people, and also that's going to be consumed within a month. Yeah. And if it's your budget blend, sure, that's more likely. Yeah, yeah. Now, Duncan Taylor in recent history I began see, in 2001. I Non-whiskey non lovers actually thinking, yeah, this is oh, I could do this, yeah. Especially on the rocks, I'll bet it would stand up to ice. Mm -hmm. uh, Glendronic, remember Glendronic, the sherried whiskey? Um, before, you think this could stand up to ice? Well, only because there's a little bit of a bite at the end. And so I'm thinking that even though it's only 40%, it might be okay with ice. I don't know. I don't It'd be know. good in coffee. I, I, I mm. challenge that. But what were you talking about? Some other things. So Glendronic. Remember our one of our favorite sherry whiskeys, Glendronic. Refresh my memory. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so an ex-employee of Glendronic started Duncan Taylor mm -hmm. um, in Shand, in the and hometown then, of Huntley. And then there's like a bit of uh, a little bit of like a sour honey in there. A little bit of sour honey after you acclimate to the sweetness a bit. 
No, the name Duncan Taylor goes back to 1938. It was a cask broker, mm -hmm. which means, you know, he would buy casks from other distilleries and either bottle them or sell them out. Sure. Trading uh, whiskeys, shares, and things. Can you do this episode if I go like this? No. <laughs> Why are you ruining that for me? I went to a lot of effort to take these nice and no one realizes. Yeah, that. just the 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 okay, command only, only people who watch uh this episode are gonna know one of my secrets. Are you ready for Which this? it looks like you're concentrating. It looks like it looks like you're really thinking. I'm thinking about the whiskey in my glass, which I am, but I'm also looking straight down on the piece of paper that has all of my notes about my research on this. Did whiskey. I just out you? You totally outed me. <laughs> I thought it was totally obvious. The thing is, I'm not good at, at memorizing scripts with a for a week with one day's notice. Yeah. So I've got to have shit written down. So why don't you memorize all the comments beforehand, Amateur. Rex? I get these like thirty seconds. Hey, that's not my fault. We have it is. <laughs> you print these at the same time you print those. No, nope. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so Duncan Taylor does some a bunch of blended stuff. That's really cool, right? Right. But they also do things like this dimensions. Okay. Which is special edition single cask releases. 23 of, years. Of old distilleries. or This is um, Linkwood, 23-year-old Linkwood, also by Duncan Taylor. Fine. As a matter of fact, Duncan Taylor, I was about to get a glass. As a matter of fact, Duncan Taylor is one of the companies I wanted to model V. Weiss Whiskey Company after. Okay. Which is one of the brand names for our distillery. There's two brand names. There's somebody, two. Somebody asked us. Yeah, they did ask this. We don't really talk about the distillery that much because... You know, there's because not ready. We got a roof. <laughs> oh yeah, we did get a roof. <laughs> um, v. Weiss Whiskey uh, Company or Whiskey. Oh, ha, 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 uh -huh. that's good. That's the name Try of that. uh, one of Dan Daniel's ancestors. Yeah, the Weiss family is related to me. My dad's side of the family right. founded Beaumont, Texas, right. among many other things. There's also going to be a second brand. They had nothing to do with whiskey, by the way. Made specifically <laughs> a second brand made specifically with the whiskey tribe in mind. Yeah. And the way that they, the methods they're using and the kind of products that, are, that they're making are gonna be very different. But we have a Velvet Glove brand, yep. which is what we're referring to it as, the Steve Weiss, and then the Tribe brand is coming soon. And the funny thing was someone asked me, you know you guys shit on all these made up, on these fake Ooh. stories of whiskey origins, right. trying to tie their name back to somebody they've never actually worked with, right? Like Elijah Craig or something. Damn. I know. Damn. But what's funny is the V. Weiss family, the Weiss family had nothing to do with alcohol ever in the whole history of the family, as far as I can tell. Right. Um, and a lot of them were teetotalers. Yeah. <laughs> so we just made up a, a story completely out of thin air and attached it to the name V. Weiss <laughs> because I thought it was funny and it was more interesting <laughs> than nothing. So at the bottom, there's this whole, if you go to the bio page, it tells this whole story of Valentine Weiss. And at the bottom, there's an asterisk that says, some of this story is true. <laughs> and what's funny is what I did is I actually took the actual biography of Valentine Weiss right. and I just interspersed fake whiskey stories into the biography. So you should get, get it to the very end and then it says, as far as you know. As far as you know. <laughs> uh, the bummer is there are people in my family who are family historians and take it very seriously. Oh, they're going to burn you. And I don't run. think they've realized yet that I co-opted Weiss and made up a whole bunch of stories about him. This is amazing. I'm going on record as saying I love 23-year-olds. Damn it, Rex. Do you not? I, Do you not? I, I love 23 year old whiskey. You need to this clarify. Is a, it's a whiskey on that. show. All right, this is going off the rails. I'm, I propose that we move on to a gift All right. from Burley Mullins. Burley Mullins. Well, you get that. Uh, Niall, 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 Lynch. Dear Daniel and Rex, could you please explain what malting is and how it is done? It's something I haven't actually understood for a long time, and you mention it quite often. Sorry for sounding like a major pleb, pleb. No, no, it's uh, actually, you can malt any grain. So malting is the process of breaking down the heavy outer shell of the grain so that, or breaking down the starch shell, so that you can get to the sugars inside the grain in order to ferment them. So the way you do that is by tricking the grain into thinking it's time to sprout. So you add a little water, you heat it up a little bit. I don't mean heat it like oven, I mean warm the temperature up. Right. 
it start the the grain goes oh time to go and it starts breaking down the outer shells and uh, and but then you want to stop it before it eats all its own sugar because there's nothing to ferment. Okay. So that's you guys stop that process. You traditionally in Scotland that was done with smoke, peat smoke. Okay. That's where peat smoke came into the process was to freeze the malting process before it ate all the sugar in the grain. So they did the water and the warmer temperature and then they stopped it with the yep. smoke. And, uh, and now you don't need that. So you can have unpeated malt whiskey. Mm. You can use gas heat or you know other things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can malt any grain. It just makes it easier. Now a lot of time what happens is you'll have malted barley in a mash bill mm -hmm. because malted barley kicks off the yeast eating process faster. Sure. And so it helps aid the process of getting access to all the other stuff that's in there. Yeah. Just kind of jump starts everything. Yeah. Uh, and that's malting. Sure. You're welcome. Here, it says Mr. read first. Read first. So, Amanda Mooch, I hope you enjoy this mead. Blind tasting. Oh! I strongly recommend you start with the one with the black caps. Okay. I'll include a basic description of each, sans tasting notes. Uh, for after the tasting, though I do understand if it doesn't end up in an episode of the Whiskey Falls, seeing That's how it's much. not whiskey, I would like a video of your reactions. Uh, Burley, come on, Burley, freaking we're, Mullins. We're gonna throw you a bone Sorry here. for the penmanship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one of these mead. is black, I, and I, one of these is silver. Cap. We've known that Burley's been a mead guy forever. Okay, and the middle. This is the first we've ever. The middle. Done. Wait, wait, wait. No, the middle is black cap. That's black cap, and start with that. According to Burley. So there's. Two. And then I have a little piece of papers here that tell us Ooh. something about the black and the silver cap. So here's the black cap. Black cap. Whoa! It's so honey, man. It is, but there's a. Wow. There's something else going on in there. It's slightly like coffee, or something. It's got some funk, man. <sighs> no, I. Ooh. Mm. Oh. By the way, this is the first time I've ever had mead in my whole life. Wow. That is like a sour Ooh. honey. And then... It's like a coffee stout. And then it, it finishes with like a coffee note. Yeah, it's a coffee stout that's flat. It's a, it's a, <laughs> and slightly sweeter than normal. It starts as a sour honey and then it finishes as a coffee. Ha! Cold brew Cold coffee. Cold brew coffee, scorched, scorched honey. honey. Maple, maple syrup, syrup and cinnamon. cinnamon. Hey! Hey, we actually do know sh Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're not garbage. Who knew? Wow. That's actually super interesting. Huh. Um, I don't know. I think it's an acquired taste. I don't know that it would be my go-to. Um, but I don't dislike no, no, it. This would I'm be... just trying to wrap my head around what's happening here. No, this is like... I'm not going to go, I'm not gonna go to this and just drink mead by itself all day. This would be an amazing pairing with so much different kind of food. This, I see this. Smells kind of vinegary. The next one. Oh, there's an. Ooh, ooh. This one's a little bit cloudier too. Did you notice that? Yeah. I'm lost on this one. There's all kinds of weird herbs stuff in this I one. I think going there's on. like a. Is there like. Do they do wine finish with me? This is like a little bit of a red. Ooh, this one's super no, sweet. I'm, I'm getting like a raspberry. I'm getting citrus. I'm getting a raspberry on the nose. <clears throat> don't, don't, don't tell me it. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Because something just happened and I should have waited. And I thought, oh, that's weird. And then I read what it is and immediately thought, I, I probably would have come close to that one because I have this memory of one of my favorite w random beer moments is when you get a good Mexican beer or even you know get a Dos Equis or something. Right. And what you do is you take a light Dos Equis and you slice jalapenos and drop is jalapenos. That the, is that the spice? The burnt slight bird on the back end? Did he have jalapenos on there? He puts chili in there. <gasps> Yeah, dried ancho chilies. No, wait, wait what's the, what was the other stuff? It was a cinnamon. Cinnamon. Have cherries. Cherry. Yeah. I was not getting cherry in that at all. No, the cherry for me was presenting as like um, like a red wine But finish. that slight vinegary funk, I think that's coming from the chilies. Mm. I like this uh, silver cap is superior to me. Really? Yeah. I like it Because I like the slight burn in the aftertaste in the back of my throat. I'm getting oil from the chilies. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, all right. That's good. Shit. What would you pair these with, man? Uh, you know what I would pair them with? Oh, Persian food, like heavy meats and uh, and rice dishes yeah. and yeah, Persian food. Ah. Persian food and that second meat with the spice burn on the end. My God, that would be good. We need to start a rum vault and a bread vault and a mead vault and a mead vault and a Persian food vault. <laughs>
<laughs> so many vaults. We only have a couple of Thank Persian you, restaurants Burley. in Austin. That's great. Thank you. I wish we had more. Artificial frequencies. He didn't we're all say talking, that. We're all, we, uh, I do not know about long Welsh words, but I have uh, to run to catch the trains. So, long farewell, public legman gagri, drab, william, silagoga. <laughs> that was on the episode we were talking about how the Welsh language has no vowels. And, it's like, uh, and they're, they're really long. The translation is... It's like, I don't know where we're the going. The translation is, hey. Or the translation is, the red train. <laughs> 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 Which train you're taking? The red line? All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. And fight. by the way, oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Tomorrow starts... Ah! The uh, quarterly challenge. The quarterly challenge of no drinking for the next week, seven days. So Count them. If you don't watch our second channel, we're going to link an episode up here to give context mm -hmm. for how we got to the quarter challenge. For a week, uh, the community is uh, not partaking in the alcoholic beverages. Yes, so for the next week, Whiskey uh, Vault is going to be only non-alcoholic content. Right. So obviously it's not mandatory, but we're inviting everybody in the Whiskey Tribe, all the Magnificent Bastards, to take a week off just to make sure there's not a problem creeping up on you. And uh, yeah, we're going to review some other stuff. There we go. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lovers' hearts. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.